Today, I set out offshore with guide Captain Mark Johnson on an adventure to pursue fish I've never caught before. Rigged with heavy fly rods and steel leaders for fish with some serious teeth. Situated between the saltwater wilderness of Everglades National Park and the deep blue waters of the Florida Strait is Isla Morada. Isla Morada is a village of six islands in the Florida Keys and is known as the sport fishing capital of the world. For me, as well as countless other fishermen, when I think of Isla Morada, I think of shallow flats with bonefish, permit, and tarpon. But today, I'm trying something out of my norm. I'm going offshore to fly fish for things with serious teeth. I'm talking about fish that require steel leaders. My guide for this new adventure is Captain Mark Johnson. His thing is fly fishing for sharks. Mark guides for Florida Keys Fun Fishing 250 days a year. Once the boat is gassed up, we idle down a channel heading out to the Gulf. Once we were clear of the channel, Captain Mark brought the big engine up to speed and we were off to a point about nine miles offshore. Our first stop was to try to catch some mackerel. We used the mackerel for chum to draw the sharks close enough to the boat to cast a fly at. I have never fished with steel leaders before, so Captain Mark gave me some pointers. Tighten up your tag in, and then one of the things that we do to finish this knot is you just put a little twist on the wire on the back so that that wire, you can break it cleanly. You never cut wire, you always kink it. Okay, you make a little handlebar, rotate it and kink it. That way, if you ever touch that, you'll never bleed. Okay. If you leave that tag end out or cut it with pliers, you will bleed. Okay. Okay. Good information to know. All right, let's get you a fresh new fly and get right back to it. A little haywire twist, a nice clouds or minnow here. So far we used tan and white, green and white, and now we're going to use blue and white. A little bit of sparkle, a little crystal flash in there. You think the fish ever really get picky about the color? Well, you know, there are some freshwater scenarios and stuff when they're eating certain bugs and stuff, I would say yes. But out here out probably Out here not. I would say not so much. The water's dirty. These fish are feeders, 
and green and white, blue and white, brown and white are all very much a bait fish pattern. Yeah. So I don't think that that has such a effect as does presentation. If the eyes are crooked and the feathers are, or the, it's all wrapped around here and it doesn't swim straight, right. that's way more of a concern than what color that is. So every time we catch a fish, we make sure that our feathers are in great shape. We always make sure that the eye and the hooks are lined up right. That's a huge part to make sure your best presentation you can do. All right. All right, here we go. Do it again. I was excited enough about catching our bait because mackerel have teeth as well the kind you use a steel leader for, and I had never caught one. Oh, got him. If he runs, let him go. Get your hands off him. Let it go. You got, got lots him. of line, lots of... Let's let him go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Left-handed reel. <laughs> if he wants to run, let him go. Oh, I'm not used to left-handed reels. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, guess what else you're going to learn today? <laughs> Spanish mackerel on the Yeah, that's a new first for me. Nice work, Jeff. I don't think. Yeah, I know I've never caught one on a fly rod for sure. Okay, so you're going to stay on that corner. Okay. And you wind down to him, and then you're going to reach him up toward me with your rod dip. And I'll grab him from here, and we'll take a quick look at it. Alrighty. Nice work on the cloud. Up and in, voila. And that's Ta -da -da. a new one for me. Okay, so this is really your rod tip there. Got it. So everybody can see what that is. That's a Spanish <laughs> mackerel on that clouds or minnow. And you can see he's got teeth. And you, my man, that's your first one. You can right. hold him like that. Now he's slippery, hence yeah. the name Slimy. Yeah. All okay. right. Got him. I'm gonna let you oh, have him. I said I had him. <laughs> I said so I had him. Sometimes you get underneath them peck fins. Yeah, there we go. There now try that like bottom there and then you can get him up and if you get him out of that face you'll show the whole fish. <laughs> A mackerel will just shred a fly, as is evident with this new Clouser minnow, compared to one that has only caught one fish. All right, my man, you're on the board. Do it again. We'll try it again. I learned how to cast a fly rod. My dad was a quail hunter, and he had some quail dogs, and uh, he'd tie a quail wing on that fly rod and cast that quail wing out in the yard and let the dogs point it. That's how I learned how to cast a fly rod was casting a bird dog named Chuck. Nice. But that's how long I've been casting with left-handed reels is since I was a little boy, you know, casting at bird dogs. There he is. There you go. Lay him run. Clear your line. Anytime you can clear your line and get to the reel, it makes your life a lot easier. Well, he's coming right to the boat, so <laughs> I'm not having much line luck with clearing. I mean, he bit that before you had a chance to even get Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I gave it a strip yet, and he was on it. What do we got here? What you got? It may not be a mackerel, maybe it's something it's else. It's small, yeah, it's little. That's okay. Everything eats the clouser. All right, so this is called the Blue Runner. He is in the Jack family. They are a great sport fish. They're also a popular sailfish bait. Pound for pound, they fight pretty impressive. I'm telling like you, he is, yeah, Bell. he is pulling. Okay, rock tip to me, just kind of ease on okay. here. And that's a new. And this is one fish that we can catch on the fly, and we'll actually get our fly back. And that's another new fish on a fly for me. It's called the Blue Runner. He's part of this Jack, the Scad family. He will also talk. But if you think about offshore fishing, yep. tuna, sailfish, that makes an amazing live bait. Yep. It's called the Blue Runner. And pretty fish, too. All right. All right. Neat. All right, your fly's still good. Yep. Do it again, my man. You're two for two. Another new. And two new fish that's I've right. never caught before on a fly. Which is the premise of today's story. Something exactly. New. Exactly. What do you got? It was two for two. All right, we'll take it. I had one, I lost him, and I looked to know. <laughs> I don't know what the first one was, but I think this one's a mackerel. Yeah, come on. Where, Where are you going? Probably a nice mackerel. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Up and over the camera one. guy, always in the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a mackerel there. Right. Get him on the reel, I hope. There we go. About 70 feet of line now. I'm a 
lot to the boat. Lift up. There we go on the fly. Just to not lose this camera. Fingers off the line. I don't think he's that big. Whatever it is. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes they swim with the boat. Sometimes they just do what they want to do. Yeah, I was going to say, I figured the fight's going to be right here. Looks like a mackerel. I think it is, yeah. I figured this is where it was going to happen, right here. Figuring it out. There's nothing like a good keyboard reel. There's good quality flight gear. Those drags are amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna rod tip toward me here and I'll grab this leader. Right on top of the mouth. Here's that. With the three mackerel in the boat that we needed for chum and a pile of torn up clouser minnows. We were ready to go looking for sharks, but we had a little time before the tide would turn in our favor, so Captain Mark decided we should try for a triple tail. So he climbed up onto the fly bridge to see if he could spot some under the crab pot buoys floating nearby. Triple tails are well known for their unusual behavior of floating just beneath the surface on their side, mimicking floating debris. They like to hang around buoys and wait for the tide to carry small crabs and shrimp by to feed okay, on. Pick it up and go again. You gotta start on the right and let it drift by you. Okay, oh, try that. Okay, he didn't react. Go on, go to the right. There. Okay, the trick to catching one again. is to drift the fly close enough by for the fish to see without okay. snagging the buoy. Yep, there you go. Okay, strip, 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 get away from that buoy. Okay, here he comes. I think I got the buoy. The buoy. Yep. <laughs> Casting a fly from a drifting boat to within inches of a buoy with a fairly fast moving current makes this a real challenge. There you go, he's looking. Trip, 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 trip. Okay, pick it up and go to the buoy. Okay, real slow strips. You're just trying to let him find it. You could go again to the buoy. Even if you do everything just right, sometimes the fish still won't take. There you go, real slow, real slow. Just let it slide by the current. You just have to move from buoy to buoy and keep right. casting. With some persistence and a little luck, it will all come together. We're good. Trip, 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 trip. Get it up in front of him. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Now here he comes, here he comes. He's looking, he's looking, going down. Got him. That a boy. Redeemed myself, I think, maybe. <laughs> Sight fishing triple tail on fly. Get away from the buoy. Here, I got him on the reel now, so now we're in business. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid you was going to think I didn't know how to do this. I feel better about redeeming myself there. That's not easy. There you go. You take your time. You want to catch them and let everybody see what he's all about. Well, I thought we were good. Body fish. They've got a big motor too, and they fight hard. Yep. Up he comes. Pretty fish. Yeah. Yep. And like I was saying, he's got amazing spines, scales, teeth. He can hurt you. Everything you want a fly rod fish. That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't think a fish that size could be that strong. I've caught some strong fish on a fly rod, but they're usually big too. But for no bigger than their size, these are some strong, strong fish. Almost looks like a flounder. Yeah. All right, so you can be brave and try to, if you think your leader's good, you want to ease him up there one time. 
or grab the fly if you can and lift him in all at once. Nice and easy. Ah, all right. There it is. Oh, you be careful holding him. Go under the belly okay. and hold him up for your camera here. There you go, everybody. Check him out. That is awesome. Pretty fish. All right. So you, since you got him, you can unhook him. And then just give him a good look. See where your thumb is? Those gills there raised. Yeah, I can, I can feel them. And you see the spines on top? Yep. And he is amazing fish. It's called a triple tail. Pelagic cool. species, amazing eating, and a great sight fishing opportunity on a fly rod. Man, we're going to let him go before I get hurt. That's right. You toss <laughs> him loose, and we're off to our next adventure. There you go, baby. All right. Good job, man. All right. This is what we call butterfly shark shrimp. Yeah, you can see the fresh oil in the blood from off the back. So as we drift. While Captain Mark was getting a good chum slick going to draw the sharks, I decided to change batteries in the wireless microphone. One of the pitfalls of not having a camera crew is not knowing if everything is working until it's too late. Apparently I forgot to turn the microphone back on. But we did get the video. After a talk through on how this was hopefully going to go down without anybody getting hurt, Mark pulled out the big 12 weight rod with the red shark fly tied on a leader that looked like clear cable. He explained to me that you wanted to wait for the shark to get close to the chum stringer, then slap the fly down to get their attention. The idea is that the shark sees the fly as a chunk of meat that is detached from the fish carcass, the classic bait and switch. As I was getting coached, two black tip sharks appeared at the chum stringer. I handed Mark the camera, he handed me the rod, and before we could get set up, I had a shark tear into the fly and head in the direction of Miami. Before I knew it, I was running seriously low on backing. Captain Mark started the engine and gave chase so we could get some line back on the reel. Once we had some fly line back on the reel, Mark put the boat in neutral and a hardcore game of tug of war ensued. It was like trying to lift a cinder block off the bottom. A storm was approaching and the wind picked up, making it a real challenge to stand up on the bow. After seeing what came up to the chum stringer, I was aware of what might be lurking below if I fell or was pulled out of the boat.
After about 20 minutes of gaining line, losing line, and slowly gaining line again, I finally started feeling the shark give a little. I could now keep the shark pretty much alongside the boat, which meant he was getting tired. I was already tired, and the storm was getting real close now. My Canon video camera is not waterproof. I finally got the leader in the rod. Getting the leader in the rod on a fish like this is the equivalent of landing a fish. You don't bring a fish like this on board for fear of harming it, not to mention the harm that could come to the people on board. So, we brought the shark up alongside where we could get a good look at it. Then Captain Mark cut the leader and set it free, just as the rain began to fall. I had just enough time to pack my cannon in the dry box and dig out my waterproof Olympus before the bottom fell out. We made the soggy boat ride back to the marina where I gathered up the rest of the mackerel fillets that we didn't use for the chum stringer and headed over to a restaurant where they prepare your catch for dinner. <laughs> 